I want everyone to know that if anybody writes an intelligent book review of any of my books and, uh, and I publish it at my website, then I will give you a free copy of the audiobook for Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom, which is a $23 value. So, and the way you would uh, submit that submit that to me is go to my writer website, Gabrielle Chana, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E-C-H-A-N-A dot com slash writer dot html. And then up at the top, just click on the link where it says, uh, cl click on this link and submit a book review and win a free copy. I have about 16 free copies to give out. I have created a book reviews page and the reason I did this is because one of my fans at Facebook uh, said that she submitted a book review and gave me a five star for Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom, the audiobook, but I couldn't find it anywhere but she says she published it and she sees it on her computer. So I think what Zach did is he he's using his cloned versions of the internet so that she sees one version of the internet and I see another and so she said okay what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and write it here I'll write it she's one of my friends at Facebook and I'm not friending a lot of people at Facebook so don't don't contact me through Facebook and I I got her review from my Facebook page and I posted it at my website and that's a uh, so she is she was the first review that I posted at my website and then I decided to expand the page and I looked back over my correspondence with my men and realized that they all made reviews of my books over the past couple years and so I just go ahead and I just went ahead and added those in so if you go to gabrielchana.com and I have a link for it underneath this video slash reviews r e v i e w s dot html it will take you right to the book reviews page. Now, if you want me to submit your review on that page, and if it's an intelligent review, which means I can tell you've read the book, and you are commenting in an intelligent manner about the contents of the book, or your experience with the book and how it's changed your life or whatever, um, I can, even if the negative review is written intelligently, I could, I could even post a negative review. But most of the negative reviews I'm getting are from Jesuits, and they're not intelligent book reviews. I can tell the person hasn't read my book, and they're just part of a massive propaganda campaign. So I won't post. I'm getting plenty of re reviews like that at Amazon, and I needed to have another forum for intelligent book reviewers who are unable to get their reviews up at, the am at my Amazon page so I created, I created a page at my website just for that. So anybody who submits an intelligent book review to my, at my writer page, I have a contact box where you'll, um, where you can write, write your review, review and submit it to me right there at my writer page. And, um, and then I get that at an email that I designated just for reviews. And I check that email every day. And if I see an intelligent review in there, I will publish that and give you a free. Now, you're going to need to give me your email address so that I can give you the code you need to get the free copy of Jesus, the Eternal Bridegroom, the audiobook. I'll need your email address, and I would like to know what country you're from. So if I publish your review, I, I'm not going to give out your email address, but I need it to be able to email you the code. I don't want to give it the code to you in a public forum because somebody else may steal the codes and then you won't get your free book. Somebody else will get the free book. <laughs> so it's, it's a, a free audio book through Audible. So, and it's a $23 value. So if you submit an intelligent book review at that book reviews page, then you could possibly win a free audiobook. And I'm very proud of the work I did on Jesus the Eternal Bridegroom. I think it's my best work yet. Um, so, just wanted to let people know about that. I also have a writer's blog, which you can find out about if you go to my uh, writer page. It's right there. My writer page has my writer's blog. You could submit a review through there, too. And if it gets published there, uh, the more than likely what I'll do is take anything that I get at my blog and publish it at my book reviews page. But if you want to you want to send me a review through the blog, that's another way to send it to me. 
but I, I will need your email address. Okay, <laughs> so your best bet if you're going to send me a review, send it to me through the the um, the box on my writer page. It's kind of like down towards the middle on the left hand side. And if you click on a link up at the top of the writer page, it'll take you right down to it. And submit the review through there because that I think I'll automatically get your email from that, and then I can email you back and uh, let you uh, have the codes for the free audiobook if you write me a good intelligent book review of any of my books that are on sale at Amazon.com. Um, so I just wanted to let the world know about that. I am in the process of working on two books at the same time, Vladimir Putin in Love and uh, the Zack Knight story, which is going to be told from Robin Williams' point of view. Zack Knight is the Antichrist. I, I'm going to tell you a little bit of how what I'm going through with the Zack Knight story. This is coming out to be going to be a novel but it's going to have a lot of nonfiction in it. The first chapter is just the result of the intensive Bible study that I did on the subject of the Antichrist. And what I did was I took verses about the Antichrist from Daniel, Revelation, and uh, some other portions of Scripture, and how they pertain to me and my men. And in place of the word, I'm, I basically created a paraphrase of the Bible and into modern English, and I substituted Zack Knight in place of the word, uh, any, any place where the Antichrist is mentioned, to really make the Bible come alive. So the first chapter is basically that, where Jesus and Robin Williams are conversing with each other, and they're discussing the Antichrist and, and where he is in the Bible. And it's actually quite interesting. Um, I've really made the Bible come alive. Okay, the second chapter, I go into how Robin Williams was murdered from his point of view. And at the end of the chapter, um, Zack Knight, uh, at the end of the chapter, um, Zack Knight and Robin Williams are on a, like a, a chasm between heaven and hell. And Jesus and Satan are making a deal and they're trying to decide what to do about Zack Knight. So Satan is undecided whether he wants to keep Zack Knight as the Antichrist. And uh, Jesus said, well, Satan, you made Zack Knight the Antichrist, and you're not going to change your mind. So here's the deal with you, Satan. You can't just change your mind and decide you don't want to use Zack Knight as the Antichrist. So here's the deal I make. I will allow you to consider another person for that position, and you can put Zack Knight back into hell and pick somebody else. On one condition, that is, you allow Robin Williams to be Zack Knight's psychotherapist for a while. And Satan has no choice but to agree to this because he's really getting kind of, in my story, he's really getting kind of disgusted with Zack Knight because Zack Knight is not quite the Antichrist he wants. So that ends chapter two. And Robin Williams has been murdered by Zack Knight, so he doesn't really want to be Zack Knight's psychotherapist. So I've got a sort of an interesting conflict set up. Now in the third chapter, I go into... Jesus says, Robin, I need to educate you about Zack Knight's background. To be honest with you, I really don't know much about Zack Knight. I, you know, he does, he's really secretive about where he grew up, if he went to school, where he's from, uh, what kind of family he's from. So I said, Lord, how do I find, I need a little background on this guy because I'm writing a novel. I'm making him the main character, even though I'm using Robin Williams to tell the story in first person point of view. And... The Lord seemed to say, well, go to my word, the Bible. He, I told you he's the Antichrist. So that's where all the first chapter comes in. Basically, the first chapter is a character study from the Bible on the subject of the Antichrist. So it gives my readers like a, an orientation to who the ant. A lot of people are not familiar with the Antichrist in the Bible. I mean, they know, they've heard the term Antichrist, but nobody, most people have not done a serious Bible study on the Antichrist. So I did that for them in chapter one to help them understand who this person is. He's a very important person in the Bible and, uh, and what the Bible has to say about him. And the Bible has a lot to say about the Antichrist. So, the, so that's the beginning of the characterization. So now the, the, you know, the reader's going to read the first chapter. They're going to know what the Bible viewpoint is on the Antichrist. And he's described as being a vile person. And, uh, and my book's going to go into great detail about that. And it describes him pretty much as a cold, cruel, deceptive leader who uh, comes to power through a small, through small army, but he uses a lot of 
wiles and ways, and he's a big liar, which pretty much describes Zack Knight anyway. So I can see how he could easily fulfill those prophecies the way he is. So, anyways, third chapter. I thought, oh, now I got to go in a little bit of his background, Lord. I mean, I know what the Bible says about him, but so I decided to. I found something interesting. I said, Zechariah. I'm in Zechariah 9:15. Okay, my birthday's 9:15:57. Zechariah is spelled Z E C H. Zach. I thought, oh my goodness, you're trying to tell me something. Zach, Zach, Z E C H. That's like Zach from his name. Then Kariah, C H A R. My last name is Cord, C H O R D. That's where my King David genes come from, the Cord family, my father's side, which is Howard Hughes was my great uncle. And in his movie, The Carpetbaggers, his main character's last name is Cord, Jonas Cord should tell you something. Okay, so I thought, wait a minute, I am here. This whole book, I said, if I study the book of Zechariah, I'm going to find out some things about me and Zach. I said, what, what about Rule 13? That's his true love. I thought, Rhea, R-I-A-H, Zechariah, Rhea. Rhea means like a short woman who's a spitfire. And I thought, ooh, that could be like hinting in Rule 13 there. And it starts with an R, four letters, like R-U-L-E. But then, and then what's really interesting is she's from Japan, and this is Zack Knight's true love. Jesus told me this. And guess what? My Catherine the Great ancestors come from the Oshu Fujiwara family, the northern Fujiwara family in northern Japan. They were in power around 1100 to 1200 AD. And right before their period was the Heian period of Japanese history. And a very famous book, which was considered the first novel ever written, Tale of Genji, was set in the high end period in the northern Fujiwara family. And the main character, Genji, is a lot like Zack Knight. He's like a womanizer. He goes around and, and then he becomes very powerful at the end. And a lot of people believe that in Tale of Genji, the main character was patterned after Fujiwara no Michinaga, who was considered the most powerful Fujiwara leader of the whole Fujiwara reign. Okay, my ancestors came from the northern Fujiwara family. They were a royal family that that intermarried with some Ainu and Amishi, and within this Ainu and Amishi, Amishi tribe was a Germanic tribe that emigrated across Siberia, came into Japan, they, and then intermarried into the Amishi, and then the Amishi intermarried into the Fujiwara family, and between those two came my ancestors called the Oshu Fujiwara, and their last names are Hidehira, Tadahira, he, um, Yasuhira, H I R A, like Rhea, uh, R I A H at Zachariah, then Hira, H I R A. So uh, the Lord might have switched the lettering around, and I might be carrying this too far, but it's like the Lord is saying in Zechariah that the Zechariah 915 woman is half King David, the K Z C H A. A R, Cord, C H O R D, my King David genes. And then Rhea, my Catherine the Great genes, come from the Hidahida, Yasuhida, from the northern Oshu Fujiwara family. That's where the Catherine the Great genes come from in Japan. And then Rule 13 is Japanese. And maybe because Rule 13 is going to play a role, a very significant role with Zack Knight, maybe that's why in Zechariah the Lord put the R first and the Rhea. I don't know. Anyways. So this gave me ideas. I said, Gail, you need to go watch a movie about Tale of Genji. So I watched it. And I thought, hmm, the storyline kind of reminds me of Zack Knight. It's a man who uh, could not be true to his heart. And he ended up having a lot of shallow affairs because he would not be true to his heart. And he was kind of stuck. He was royalty, but he was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And he had to do what was expected of him. In Japanese culture, you know, saving face, very important. And I thought, that's kind of like Zack Knight in Rule 13. So I <clears throat> I watched the movie. <clears throat> then I, I'm reading, to, listening to an audio book of The Tale of Genji. But I'm going to have a link for that. I actually made a playlist for that. And I'm listening to that right now. And from that, in combination with the mo movie with Robin Williams' Goodwill Hunting, I'm borrowing some ideas from that storyline. <clears throat> from Goodwill Hunting, <clears throat> borrowing some ideas from Tale of Genji, borrowing some ideas from uh, Thornbirds, putting them all together and creating a Zack Knight composite character who is very believable. And I think this is going to be a fascinating book.